Good morning, everyone. This is our class for practical one. And um, the uh, the thing I want to say, though, is in the Moodle page you will find the uh, you will, you will find our practical manual. So, uh, let me just see. If we can. There are seven practicals. All of them have a, a um, have a detailed procedures. You know, each of these uh, practicals have detailed procedures um, of uh, things that we need to do practically as, as a follow-up to the lectures that we hold. Uh, uh, the plan is the practical put into practice some of the things that we cover in the class of Wednesday. So, so we we'll just uh, on to, anyway, uh, on hand, we've just had the, uh, the practical one um, printed. So everyone here in our class now has a copy. If you don't have a copy, there's a any repeating. These practical are, are, are meant to be followed, you know, uh, you follow whatever is in there. Everything that is in this practical is in the uh, marking rubric. So it's just automatic. I, I just go through, if, 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 uh, if what says here, uh, for example, procedure, you have a look at familiarization and the insights of engines and components. Procedure, rules or take photos to identify the following engine components as, as displayed and not attest to a cylinder block. So I go in when I'm doing the marking, and if the cylinder block picture is there, you get the mark. Uh, so you must uh, uh, include everything that is in the procedure. It, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't really take very long. The main, uh, for this practical, the main thing is that you uh, have a look at what these uh, components look like. We've had a look at them last, uh, uh, I mean last Wednesday when we went, we went through the notes, what a piston looks like, what a cylinder looks like, what a spark plug looks like. But now you will see it in uh, physically. Uh, they are there on the table. You know, you can you can take one photo. Well, you can take one photo if you have all these things, and all you need to do is label, ah, label things. Ah. Now the other thing uh, I just want to say about labeling photos is that sometimes, you know, when you submit uh, an assignment on Moodle, some of these uh, arrows can move around. Ah. So I, 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 my suggestion is if, if you, um, if you you label photographs, um, do it on uh, whatever, on Word or, or whatever, and then, uh, um, what's it called, uh, the name of this thing, this thing. Then you, you uh, slip and, uh, what is this? Okay. Then you, uh, what you call this? Yeah, then you snip, uh, snip and uh, paste, uh, or snip and sketch. Uh, mm -hmm. Then you take that and uh, and, and then paste it, uh, paste the uh, snip because then the, the arrow is uh, is included in the photo and it will not move around. Uh. So that's uh, snip and and uh, uh, also, I just want to say, before we actually begin this one, particularly for the online students. Um, now, uh, what, what uh, the, the, these are the, 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 the procedure, this is the, these are the steps that I suggest we do. We will uh, take the photos here of uh, whatever's happening here, 
including all of these things, scratch up, etc., etc., and uh, post them on the Moodle page. Now, if you are an online student, the best thing to do is, if you have a tutor, and I know you have a tutor in uh, Lofala campus, there's a tutor in Manuati, there's a tutor, local tutors in uh, Solomon Islands. Now, for, for those uh, campuses, uh, my strong suggestion is uh, you, can, you can study the, the, uh, these videos that are put onto the Moodle page from here, but I prefer that, that, that the students and the local teachers go out and repeat, the, follow the procedures, find a location where these are available. For instance, this practical now is on uh, components of uh, the engine, the main components of the engine, and then labeling these things and answering those questions. Uh, find a diesel engine and uh, you know take those all the procedure. Find a diesel uh, petrol engine and take a photo. I, I identify the cylinder, spark plug, etc., etc., etc. So I prefer you do that. And, and, uh, and also, uh, I can see the photos of you and your teacher doing that. I would award the highest marks for that because I know not only did you study the, the uh, practicals of the photos in here, but you also went out and did it yourself. Now, I know in, in all countries of the, of the Pacific, particularly USP campuses, there are, there are uh, engine workshops, repair workshops. I'm sure they, had, uh, they are willing to uh, use uh, some, you know, we, uh, you, you don't take them with you, they need to show you, okay, this is a piston. There's a crank shot. This is a cam shot. So, I can show you do that. Now, because you have a, a teacher who can do it. Now, the other campuses that don't have teachers, such as in Kiribati, Tuvalu, Lotoka, um, etc. Now, I will give the highest marks to those who actually go and do it themselves, the students. Because you don't have a teacher, you yourself can uh, you know, take the initiative and go out and find a workshop and identify these things. And that uh, we see that you yourself actually went out and did it. So, <coughs> to me, that's an excellent way of learning. And that's, uh, I, and I award the highest marks to uh, that kind of work. Because you, you take the initiative, go out and even Kiribati, even Tuvalu, I know Tuvalu has a, has a, you know, a couple of, uh, you know, they, they will have small engines, they will have a small engine somewhere, in a workshop somewhere, they will have heat heaters, they will have uh, some sprayers, go to the Ministry of Agriculture and see if they have some of this equipment. I know they have uh, one or two uh, small tractors, so, I, I, I believe uh, in all of these practicals, not just this one, even the mapping one, you can find a tape and go and measure whatever. So, uh, but I, 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 really, I take my hat off to those who actually go out and seek knowledge and, and seek the best marks. That's how you get an A student. It's a person who wants to do the best. Uh, the best that you can be. So, I am saying that to, uh, particularly for online students. I, uh, I apologize and, and, and say sorry that you don't have a tutor in, in Tuvalu, but the university has a policy, uh, you know, uh, provide, they provide tutors where, where the numbers of students uh, justify it. So if, if the numbers don't reach a certain level, then you don't get a tutor. But it, it doesn't stop you from learning. That's part of uh, online learning. 
that's part of the world that is uh, happening now. We are more and more relying on technology to, uh, you know, to get our, to, to, you know, to be educated in this day and age. So, having said that, I, uh, if you have any queries, uh, let me know, um, and uh, I will respond uh, accordingly. Uh, in here we have uh, Coach Murray who will be doing a video taping and we have uh, uh, Ted who is our person in charge here of the workshop. Now from here on, on um, uh, we, I will come and we carry out the practicals but there are times where you have to do it yourself. Ken is the person that you um, contact and he will make arrangements with you, you know, going forward. Okay. Yeah, let's make a start. So this one is practical here. Um, the first one, ah, four stroke metric. Procedure, you take, so take photos of these things. Now, um, I'm going to stand up and you, uh, you go around You just make sure that uh, you point out these things to me and we make sure that the uh, online students also uh, can, can see for themselves. Uh, okay? So, piston and connect with the piston. Connecting rod. Remember that picture you saw on the, on the notes. Huh? The crankshaft. This is a this is a four-stroke, one-cylinder engine. This one. It is a petrol engine. It is a four-stroke, and it's cylinder. Huh? And you can tell it's a one-cylinder. This is the crankshaft for a one-cylinder because it has one offset. This is where the piston here. It's connected to the shaft here. Ah. So this is a crank shaft. Uh, this is the flywheel. So this one is connected to this one. Ah. Spark plug. This is the spark plug. And then you can see the cap. This is the cap that we talked about yesterday. That's where the electricity jumps and causes spark, causing uh, combustion. Camshaft. This is the camshaft. Now, uh, you can tell the difference between uh, the camshaft. This is the crankshaft. The crankshaft has, has an offset. See, it's offset this way to fit the, 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 the piston and the connecting rod. But the camshaft is straight, huh? it's straight. This is the timing gear. This is the timing gear that connects to the other gear there for, for opening and closing the valves. Now you can see this one. There are two uh, ropes, one, two, for opening and closing the, the witch valves. Who was in class last week? Hey, this week, Wednesday. Yeah, in intake and the exhaust. Ah. So then you know because it has only two uh, valves, it's for one thing. Ah. Inlet and exhaust valves. Well, these two, uh, the valves look like this. The, uh, the valves are. Uh, when the, when, when the knob gets to the bottom, it, it pushes it up, goes down. Huh? So this is the uh, this is a valve. Okay. So those are separate. Those are separated. Huh? Now two procedure two a. Use or take photos of the machine, engine, and clearly label the following on the engine. 
So now we want you to, to uh, all these parts are now put together in this one. And then you want to take a photo of this and then uh, label the, uh, these things again here. How they are put together. Ah. So the cylinder, this is the cylinder. You know this is a cylinder because well the piston is inside here. And uh, the cylinder normally has a uh, has these uh, uh, thin sheets of metal attached to it. This engine here is, uh, although we haven't come to it yet, but this engine is air-cooled. You know, most uh, big engines like the cars, like the, the cars, trucks, they are water-cooled. That means water will, be, uh, will, will go around, tubes of water will go around the uh, cylinder, particular cylinder, because this is where the combustion occurs, this is where the heat uh, is concentrated. So water usually surrounds, uh, well you can't see it, but I mean there are tubes inside where the water falls around. It picks up the heat and takes it away into the radiator, removes it. Because if it is not done, it will uh, overheat and it will melt the engine and damage it. Because uh, once the combustion occurs, and as it uh, pushes the piston down, then the heat that remains there is no longer of any use. Ah. So you want to move it, move it away, so that's why you cool it. Because you don't want that heat anymore, because it's done its work, we are getting it ready for the next combustion. So you get rid of that heat, and uh, cool down the engine and then you take in more fuel. So, so that, uh, that is why heat uh, removal is so important. That's why you can damage your car if you, uh, you don't have a, uh, if, if something goes wrong with the heating, uh, the, the cooling system, uh, and air cool. Usually scents have air cool because it's, it's difficult, uh, like this one, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you're gonna water cool it, ah, yeah, it's gonna add another huge, big, complicated uh, piece of uh, the machine. Ah. So instead of uh, using water, most uh, single cylinder, if not all, including a two stroke engine, is air cooled, which means that the, uh, what, the, the flywheel. The flywheel that moves around is adapted to be a fan, ah, so that when it turns, it blows air onto the cylinder, and then it goes out to the atmosphere. And this is why the this is why it has these fins, these metal fins, attached to the attached to the cylinder body, so that the heat is uh, carried from the inside the cylinder to the outside by these things, uh, through the process of what? Metals. If one side is heated, it will travel to the other side. Uh, it will travel uh, along, uh, uh, I think it's convection. Uh, process of uh, con convection, conduction, while electricity is conducted through the metal. Uh. Anyway, that's what the uh, these things are for. So that's how you can identify, well, that is the thing. Uh, yeah? Spark plug. Well, in this one, the spark plug uh, would be attached to here, like this. And uh, in my head is not here. This is your spark plug. So you put it here and so that you can identify it. Fuel tank, uh, this one, this is where you pour in the fuel, yeah? Remember we were saying yesterday, this is the fuel tank. This is where the air goes in. Uh, usually we have a uh, air, uh, you can see that, that, uh, you see that uh, engine there, similar to this one. Uh, there's an air cleaner on the top, yeah? You see, uh, it sits on here, but they're keeping it away. So the air goes in here, 
the fuel comes from here. Both of them meet together in the carburetor. This is the carburetor. Mix together in the right amount. And, uh, you know, sometimes you're, you're, when your car uh, is, is in too much, uh, too much um, petrol and not enough air, then, then you would need to take it to a mechanic who will, they, they call it, tune it, uh, tune the engine. It means uh, you play around with, uh, with some, uh, with, uh, with a pattern somewhere, tune it so that the uh, ratio is, uh, you know, just like, uh, it's, it's, uh, I it's this way. You are uh, mechanical, you know, well. Okay, so, uh, wait. so they need uh, air coat in here, oxygen, petrol comes up, C18, whatever, mix together in a carburetor, goes into the cylinder. This is the choke. If you pull it, if you put it, if, if you push it in, it will uh, have a certain amount of air going into the carburetor. If you pull it out, you increase the, the amount of air going into the engine. Now there's a, there's a, there's a question somewhere. And uh, so you can, it's probably, you know, sometimes if you don't get all of these in one photo, you can take a photo from here. Uh, to identify these things and take a photo on the top, identify all the other things. Uh, so you can move uh, two or uh, three. Okay. Uh, fuel tank, oil tank, you can't see the oil tank here, but the, uh, the, the, um, the crankcase down here is taking away. Uh, you can, well, you can also take a, uh, but you can empty the air with one the one over there. So, sitting right here. Uh, so this is the air cleaner. Sitting on top, similar to here. Uh, you can also take this photo and uh, uh, to identify it, it's, it's easier for you. Uh, uh, but uh, we've taken this off so you can, uh, it's easier for you. In the head is located here. I'm not sure whether it's, uh, you know, it's not, uh, not required. Uh, but the oil tank is here, down here. You see the, um, this is the way you open the, the thing to pour in the oil. And, and uh, you can see this is, has been removed from here. Uh, so that, in fact, this is the oil tank. Here. This is the part of the oil tank. I mean, the camera has been removed from, this is the crankcase. So the crankcase for this engine is also the oil tank, part of the oil tank. Remember I, when we uh, had our class, I said uh, that when the piston goes up, the oil moves up too. Yeah, the oil, because this is part of the oil tank. So when the piston goes up, the oil goes up with the, with the piston, and then uh, the oil ring stops the oil from seeping into the top here, interfering with combustion. Uh, and, the comp and, and the compression ring, which is on the top, uh, stops the, uh, when, 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 when the combustion occurs, stops the heat, uh, from, uh, on heat and the pressure from uh, going past the piston and going downwards and interfering with the oil. Uh, so, because if, if you if you if there's a if a pressure is able to pass down, then you lose the power. Ah, you lose the power to push the piston down, and that's why I'm saying that you can't climb up the hill. Maybe something maybe not having enough power. Maybe something wrong with the compression ring. And often uh, when that happens, the mechanic will change the. the the top ring, air cleaner, carburetor. So again, I said, this is the carburetor. Mm. Uh, you know where, where the carburetor is? Because that's uh, where both the, 
oil, oh, sorry, not the oil, the petrol and the air, meat, oh. so that's a factory. So that's uh, in answer to the, the, the question down below, where is the air cleaner output attached to? Explain why. Uh, I just did. I just, I just explained it to you. Where is the air, air cleaner output attached to? Explain why. It's attached to the carburetor because the, that is where the, uh, the air and the petrol are both attached to for mixing before going into the, into the cylinder. Ah. <coughs> So it means then, where is the carburetor attached to? Inlet valve. Carburetor is attached directly to the inlet valve. Because the, during the inter induction stroke, intake stroke, air and uh, fuel is uh, drawn into the cylinder from the carburetor. And then the smoke uh, goes out. Uh, so it, 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 the smoke goes out where? From where? Exhaust valve through what? Through the muffler. So the muffler is attached directly to the exhaust valve. Ah. So there's a muffler. That's where the smoke comes out. This is the, this is the, the, the valve. When that goes up, it opens the the valve to the, when that goes up, it opens the, the hole and smoke goes out during the, the what smoke? Huh? Exhaust stroke. Ah. Let's see if we can move this. I used to be able to, okay. Yeah. Well, Okay. Yeah, well anyway. Maybe we can. You see the magnets? See the I was talking the other day about uh, this, uh, this is the coil and this is the uh, flywheel. So this moves around and uh, a quarter of the flywheel is a magnet. See? It is a magnet there. And uh, I, I explained it to you the reason why. Uh, it's because if you put a coil of wire, coil of wire next to a moving magnet, moving magnet, it causes electricity. That's how you uh, produce, produce the electricity from a spark plug. Uh, the flywheel, uh, doing, because remember, there are uh, four strokes, four strokes. Induction stroke, that's the petrol going in. Uh, petrol plus there, induction stroke. Then, um, and then uh, compression stroke, yeah? And then the power stroke. And then the last one is the stroke. So the magnet forms a quarter, uh, a quarter of the, of the flywheel because uh, the other three quarters of the of the flywheel, flywheel is not is not a magnet so when it passes uh, when it passes the, the coil the other three quarter part when it passes the coil no electricity is produced only during the quarter that uh, that passes uh, next to the coil is electricity so that's the part it passes when uh, during the power stroke. Uh, so it's made in such a way that during the power stroke, the magnet moves next to the, the coil, producing the electricity. When uh, the, when that's passed, then no no more electricity because that's not a magnet. Uh. Okay, so you know this is the this is the uh, intake valve because that's where the carburetor is attached. This is the exhaust valve because that's where the muffler is attached. Uh, yeah?
So this is. Oh, I also explain well, why not the choke. The choke is this thing here. When uh, when you don't operate it, there's a special. There's a if you look. When it, when it's not uh, operational, the choke. There's a special. Uh, there's a particular amount of uh, air that is allowed. That is allowed into the carburetor. When you when you are uh, when you pull it out, you open up the air. Ah. That's because. Uh, I'm oh, sorry. When you open it up. It cuts the air to a very small amount. When it is in operational, the air is balanced with the, with the petrol, so it's running normally. When you pull it this way, you cut the, you cut the air. You cut the amount of air going in, and you increase the petrol. And the reason for that is, sometimes, if you don't use the machine for very long, for a long time, uh, it can it can be hard to uh, start. Uh, so in order to give it a good, you know, chance to start, you close the air and increase the petrol, so that uh, that is supposed to uh, catch fire easily and start the engine. And once it starts, then you, uh, when you well, once it starts, then you push it back in. Ah, uh, no more. You know, uh, like the wheat eater or the chainsaw. You pull, 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 doesn't start, and then you, you, you often see the, uh, you know, the, the person operating, pulling uh, the choke, and starts, starts, then uh, pull, pull the cord. Once it starts, then he pushes it back in. Uh, that's because you are uh, cutting down the amount of air, increasing the ratio of petrol, so that you can catch fire easily and start. That's the reason. Ah. There's a question. Oh yeah, C. Let's answer to C. So you are uh, <coughs> one or two, just one or two sentences. Come on, eh? one, or two, one or two pictures, photos, label these. You know, uh, you, you get the marks on. The, the marking rubrics already there. So just give me those things. You don't need to. Give uh, a huge, uh, a huge report. Ah, two or three pages. That's enough. Okay. Any questions here before we move to the diesel? Good, good, good. So I hope uh, the online students are also following this. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm sure you can find an engine somewhere and just, you know, ask the mechanic to. Uh, show you where the piston is, you just take the, the piston and, ah, in your own country. You get better marks that way. Okay, let's move to the <coughs> diesel engine. Uh, the engine of a, of a small tractor, uh, a working tractor. This is the kind of tractor that you, the person will uh, push before him and it does the, does the work. So. <coughs> Study this engine carefully and then you take a photo photos to show I identify two main differences between this and the four stroke petrol one. Okay. We covered some of this just uh, on Wednesday. Ah. ah. Okay. What are some of the differences? Remember this is a four stroke engine. What are some of the differences? <coughs> yeah, so if you, if, more, if you come around here, it's a diesel engine. So that's one uh, different fuel. Ah. Uh, using, uh, but you can't see it because you can't look inside. And, uh, the, the, this question is to uh, something that you can see 
that tells you that this is, that confirms to you that this is a diesel engine. Huh? You need to have two. Well, to me, first thing is, it doesn't have a spark plug. This is the cylinder head. You can take this off. This is the cylinder head. Somebody. So that's the, uh, and you can see there is no uh, spark plug. Take a photo of it. You see, normally you have a, on the top, top you have a, like, normally on the, on the top, you will have a spark plug, uh, but there's no spark plug. This, this is a, this is the diesel fuel injector. So you can take a photo of uh, that to prove that this is in the, the uh, diesel engine. The other thing I would, um, <coughs> you can take a photo from, uh, yeah, or, or like this, to show that this is in fact a uh, fuel injector. It doesn't have a cut plug. The other thing too is, this is the air cleaner. This is where the air goes in, and you can see it goes directly into the inlet now. This is the inlet now. This is a diesel engine. Ah. In the induction stroke, the inlet valve opens. The piston is going down, the inlet valve opens. Air goes inside. Now, see, there's no diesel going inside. Mm. Huh? That's, the, that's the main difference between this one and the petrol. During the induction stroke, piston goes down, the inlet valve opens, air goes inside. No diesel. Huh? Remember, the petrol engine is piston goes down, inlet valve opens. Air plus fuel goes inside. Next year, huh? This one, no. The inlet valve opens, in induction stroke. The piston goes down, inlet valve opens, air goes inside. So, since petrol, says so diesel doesn't go inside, the air cleaner is attached directly to the intake valve. Because in the induction stroke, only air comes from the atmosphere, cleaned by the air cleaner, goes inside the cylinder. That's a, that's a obvious uh, <coughs> reason to say that this is a diesel engine. One, no spark plug. Two, air cleaner is attached to the intake now. There is no carburetor. Remember the petrol air plus petrol tank attached to the carburetor? before it's attached to the inlet valve. This one, the air goes inside the air cleaner, directly into the valve. There, there is no <coughs> carburetor. That's the first thing you can see. You can't see a carburetor. Uh, so that's three. Uh, two main differences. And make sure that the two differences can be clearly seen and labeled in the photos. So take a photo of this and identify the things that I said. Ah. Yeah? Okay. Then you take photos to identify the components of the fuel supply system as listed below. So you, I think you need to come on this side. Yeah. This side here. Yeah. So this is the fuel tank. So you can take a photo from this side, <coughs> like that, and then just uh, label them. Ah. Fuel tank, fuel filter, this one. Fuel lines, see the diesel comes from here, goes with the fuel filter, 
and then it goes here, and then it's attached to the uh, here, and then attached to the the uh, fuel injector. Uh, fuel injector. Come here and so remember the fuel injector is located in the position of the of the in the petrol engine is is called the spark plug. Uh, <laughs> because the diesel does not uh, go directly on the intake valve. Okay, so that's an induction stroke, or the air gets in. Compression stroke, the piston moves up, the both uh, intake valve and exhaust valve are closed for compression. Huh. The, the, the air heats up, maybe on the air is the, the air, air heats up, that's the end of <coughs> the top, that's the end. And then power stroke, the third one, ah. The power stroke, because the air is very, um, is very hot, this is at the top, the, the fuel injector sprays diesel onto the hot air, causing the ignition. Yeah? So this is where the, you can see the fuel injector comes in here. So it sprays the diesel from here. Huh? That's yeah, that's the fourth reason. That's the fourth evidence. You can I don't see a spark plug. You know when you're in a in a in a petrol engine that you can see the, the bottom of the spark plug uh, coming out. But in here it's a small hole for the diesel to uh, be sprayed. Yeah. These are the two, two uh, valves. This is the exhaust valve because it's attached to the muffler. This is the intake valve because it's... Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. No, no this is the uh, this is, uh, intake valve because that's uh, attached, sorry. It's attached to the air cleaner. Ah, that's where the air comes in. And this is the exhaust now because it goes out here where the muffler is. So the muffler is located uh, here. So that's the um, intake valve. This is the exhaust valve. And this is the, the diesel injector. Ah. So you can. Fuel injector. So you can. Either identify it on this, on this, yeah, from the other side. Uh, so you probably need uh, two, two photos, that one and that one. Or if you want to turn this around, uh, you do it the way you think uh, you uh, need the detail for you. Explain the following. The meaning of the term Leading a diesel engine. What's a okay. oh. sorry? Uh, leading a diesel <coughs> engine. Now, I think uh, explain everything to you. I'm um, of the opinion that you should uh, do some research. I think that's a good idea. You go and tap into uh, Google. Leading a diesel engine. What is it? The meaning of the term leading a diesel engine. What happens to the engine to cause this? It's effective and how to prevent it from happening because it's not a good thing. It's a, it's, it's, it's a, it's a problem. So I think uh, I will uh, yeah, also to online students, I'll leave that to you to do a little bit of research. You know the, the, the uh, search Moodle, I mean uh, Google search, is so easy to make these days because you just, you just uh, put the, the question in into it and the whole world of knowledge comes your way. Uh, it's so easy to get information these days. So, I leave that to you to answer. I, I won't answer it for you. You um, 
But make sure these three things are covered. What is a, what, what does it mean by bleeding a diesel engine? And what happens to the engine if you don't bleed it? And uh, how do you prevent it from happening in the future? Yeah? Okay, the air cleaner, you can remove it. Okay. This is, um, in your notes, you will see this uh, type of air cleaner. The air goes into, uh, it, it, it goes from the bottom here, goes up and goes down the side here, and then uh, mixed with the oil at the bottom. See, normally there's uh, some oil down the bottom there. And then comes up through the filter, clean. And then, and then goes, uh, or comes out uh, here in the filter and then goes back down before it goes into the, into the cylinder. During the uh, witch soap. <coughs> Air goes in during the induction storm. This thing goes down, inner valve opens, exhaust valve closed, air goes inside. Yeah, anyway. Um, so this is an oil bath air cleaner. It's in your notes. There's a picture of it in there. There are many different types. There's also the, that one here. This one here uses uh, sponge, oil soaked sponge. It's a, uh, and, and you just take out the sponge and clean it and you put it back in. Okay. Why, uh, yeah, yeah, this one, four. You should now be able to answer it. What type of air cleaner is it? Oil bath air cleaner. Which part of the engine is it attached to? It's attached to the inlet valve directly. Ah. Why is it attached to it? Why? No, no, that's not the reason why. Because only air gets in, is in the induction stroke. The induction stroke is where materials are taken in. Except for the diesel. The diesel engine, the, the, the diesel is sprayed by the, by the fuel injector to the power stroke. But, uh, Intake valve and exhaust valve, intake valve takes in air for the diesel, but in the petrol, it takes in air plus, uh, plus uh, petrol. Uh, and the reason why it's attached to the carburetor is because the carburetor does the mixture. Mm. So, why is it attached to it? Because only air is taken in during the injection system. Mm. Remove the Valve assembly cover. Take or use a photo to label the following parts. We've done that. Fuel injector, this one. Intake and exhaust valves. With piston. You can see the piston for this one. You can see the, the piston there. So you can take a photo from there. Just point out the piston. Ah. See, it's a very big piston. And you can see it goes back uh, quite a ways. So uh, there's a big area for, for air for compression to occur. Uh, and as you can recall, uh, compression ratio of this one is much, much higher than, uh, than the pet uh, petrol engine. Huh? So you can uh, take a photo from here also, point out the piston, the, and the cylinder. So this is the, this is the, where the piston is, is inside, yeah, and uh, this is the cylinder here, the colors of cylinder. Any questions? Okay. And uh, last engine is the two case. Uh, as I said, it's a different type of engine. 
It doesn't have uh, it doesn't have uh, many of the things that Allah that the uh, fourth book even has, such as uh, it doesn't have any mouth. It operates. Remember, it has ports, inlet port, and uh, exhaust port. So it uh, it's free from those. It is uh, air cooled, and uh, there's a fan here for for blowing out uh, chemical. Uh, so take one user for the machine and you can able to. So for this one, you just need to. Uh, Take a photo and uh, label the different things. That's from the back here and the front. You may have to take a couple of photos to uh, cylinder. As I said, uh, this is a air cooled engine, so you find those uh, those uh, sheets of metal, uh, the ones conducting uh, heat from the from the cylinder. So this is the cylinder. Here. Ah. This one with the fins, taking uh, heat inside the cylinder, in the combustion chamber, to the outside air. Ah. And the fan is uh, fan. The flywheel uses a fan, blowing air through here for the sprayer, but also blowing air across the fins here to take the heat away from the cylinder. So that's the cylinder. Spark plug uh, hey, this is the spark plug here, but it's uh it's not attached but uh it will not normally be attached uh, on top of the cylinder. But you can uh you can identify the uh, the spark plug. It's been taken out. So you can identify from here. Because it's a, it's a petrol engine, so you need a spark plug. Ah. Fuel tank, it's a fuel tank. I just want to uh, emphasize to you that um, uh, the two-stroke engine doesn't have an oil tank. Remember, the oil tank's job is to duplicate the moving parts, like for the the four-stroke engine, uh, the crankshaft, the camshaft, the piston, all of those things need to be lubricated with oil so that you don't uh, you take away too much friction, take away the, so that the thing can work properly. Uh, this one doesn't have an oil tank, but what it does have is a, a uh, tank, uh, petrol mixed with oil, two-stroke oil. Uh, there's a special oil, you can buy them in any shop, and you add it here. Look, uh, you should read the manual <coughs> to find out what is the ratio for mixing. Sometimes, uh, I think it's uh, 125, one uh, oil, 25 mils of petrol to one mil of oil. Um, and then, so, so, so if, you, if you are putting in a liter, a liter is 1,000 mils. So the oil will therefore be, if it's uh, 125, be 25 mils. Huh? What is it? Uh, 125. 125. Yeah, yeah, but. Yeah, well, you, uh, yeah, this is a two story. Air cooled two stroke oil. But normally these oils have different uh, numbers. When we do the practical on uh, maintenance, tractor maintenance, we'll cover this too, but uh, they normally is they call SAE. SAE up to 50 is engine oil. SAE 70 to 90 is uh, oil for, for these things. <coughs> yeah. So this is an example of this one. So you add to here, and um, the rate sometimes is one, 50, 1 to 15 or 1 to 25. 
Okay. See the spark plug. Fuel tank. Carburetor. Well, this one is a petrol engine. It has a carburetor. So air goes in. And um, last petrol goes in and they uh, mix together. So. Uh, <clears throat> Oh. Well, you can. You need to find out well, where's the. Uh, well, this is this is the air cleaner. They've taken off the air cleaner, but, see. but uh, air goes in here. Fuel comes from down here, and it's mixed in the cup reader. So this is the cup reader here. So the cup reader is attached. Directly to the valve, uh, or in the intake port. There's no valve port. So what's the question? Carburetor. This is the carburetor. You just find where the fuel goes in and where the air goes in and meet. That's the carburetor. Air cleaner. Air cleaner. This is the air cleaner. The choke. Ah. Uh, no. Yeah, uh, this is the choke. You can see here the, this is the normal uh, position. You can see this is the only the, You can see here if you come to the other side here. You can see that this is the, the small hole where the air goes in when the choke is not in uh, operation. So when I operate the choke, you see. There's a picker hole. Ah. See the, the, the block? The hole, the, the hole is now uh, in no block. But when you, when you uh, operate, I mean, this is the normal. Ah. There you can see the small hole where the air goes in. When you operate it, you can see the hole has been, uh, this obstruction has been taken away completely. Yeah, so normally you start it with this position and then you put it back in for the normal position. So that's the choke. So this is the two-stroke engine. Where is the air cleaner output attached to? Where? Does it have a carburetor? Yeah, uh, yeah. attached to the carburetor. Why? Explain why. It's the same as the other one. It, it, it's attached to the carburetor because that's where the air plus the petrol are mixed together, delivering into the combustion chamber during the induction storm. Ah, yeah, that's the full answer. What is the most obvious, obvious evidence confirmed that this is a two-stroke a two-stroke petrol engine? <laughs> Why is this a, what is a, what is the, the evidence to confirm to you that this is a two stroke mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. the oil, the oil and petrol are mixed together mm -hmm. in one way. Huh. So if there's no oil tank, it must be here. Four stroke have always an oil tank. Diesel and uh, four stroke. Always an oil tank. But this one, no oil. No oil tank, but the oil is mixed together with the petrol in one tank and it uses a special two stroke oil. This oil is made especially to be burnt and it will burn completely. I mean, there's no residues. But if you use uh, the wrong oil, like, uh, Oil for four stroke, you're likely to cause problems of residues uh, because not everything is going to be burnt. So it may cause uh, uh, problems. Uh, well, I think that's the most obvious evidence. To me, that's the most obvious evidence. It's not a diesel engine because it uses petrol. And it uses a spark plug, but, but you see, uh, 
So does the force flow pattern. It uses a spark plug. A lot of people say, uh, oh, it's because it has a spark plug. But the force flow pattern also has a spark plug. Okay, so uh, really, that's, those are the things that we, I want you all to uh, include in your report. And remember, uh, don't include things that you are not asked to include. Just those things, if one photo is enough to, to uh, label these things, then, then that's fine. But you've got to uh, make sure you include everything because all of this has marks in the marking uh. So if you have uh, any more information, uh, um, email me, email and uh, gmail and uh, you can email me and I can elaborate. Uh, but for this practical, you need to do some research on the bleeding. Uh, that part I didn't explain to you because I think it's, it's good for you to have a look at. But don't, don't uh, give me a whole scientific paper on the uh, uh, Just say, you know, in one or two sentences what it is, what, what, what the answer is. Okay? And uh, use your own words. Plagiarism is not allowed, and uh, uh, you know we have similarity index that we have to check. It is better you read, read the stuff, and you use your own words. Even if the English is wrong, use your own words to, uh, to explain that. Okay, if no other questions, then uh, thank you for coming, and uh, Okay, then thank you and uh, check the Moodle page. Uh, what I will do today is I will open up the submission box and then you are free to, uh, to uh, use the materials. Hopefully uh, the online students would have access to uh, the lecture on uh, Wednesday and earlier on Monday so you can uh, uh, do these practicals. But of course, if, if, uh, if it's uh, late, I, I can always grant some uh, extension uh, for the date line. Okay, so thank you, and we'll see you uh, next week. We have another practical. Uh, okay, thank you.